Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Creative Podcast. It is I, Kayla. I know it's been a month, but I told y'all these episodes would be monthly, okay? I told you. I warned you in advance. I'm sticking on top of my stuff, though. I am. And today, we are going to be talking about college in lieu of everyone graduating i feel like everyone around me is graduating either college or high school right now and number one i love seeing the people who are younger than me like graduate and they're so cute and y'all are just growing up so fast and i'm just like wow (laughs) okay y'all were just like sophomores two minutes ago but anyways yeah um i'm gonna be talking about college But I'm going to try to make it, like, really fun and interesting. I asked a lot of polls on my Instagram stories. So if you don't follow my Instagram and you're not in the loop, at kcreates is where it's at. That's where it's happening. And y'all kind of went crazy on the response question. Like, I put, like, an open response question. So I'm going to read off some of what you guys think about college and... It's going to be a fun time. We're going to be open and honest with it because people have a lot of mixed emotions about college. And I know especially now it's a sensitive time because one, people are graduating college and they're probably either like that was a scam or like that was the best time of my life. And people are actually graduating high school. So they're probably thinking like, do I want to go to college Do I not want to go to college? What do I want to do with my life? I don't know what to do. So, let's talk about it. Let's break it all down. I'm here. I am your shoulder to cry on or smile on. Gosh, that was really bad. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking and get into the highs and lows of this week for me. Okay, before we jump into the responses, I just want to address, I'm so sorry that my mouth is so close to the mic in this episode, and every time I say pee, it just, oh, I'm sorry. I'm still learning at this. I'm still practicing my podcasting skills, okay? And also, I wanted to mention the new podcast cover. If you love it, let me know you love it, because I'm so freaking proud of it. I put so much time and effort, really, it only took like an hour and a half to do honestly it only took an hour and a half so i am very very proud of it especially because it only took an hour and a half to do additionally y'all y'all went into the last episode over 20 listeners on the on the last episode the summer bucket list episode so if you want to hear more like that please let me know because i will certainly do more of those because that was such a fun episode to do okay continue with your schedule programming so first and foremost the high for the week is i have been feeling pretty good this this past week like last week and this week things have just been like great i don't really know what's going on i don't know what the shift is but i love it because Two to three weeks ago, your girl was struggling. She's she's struggling. But this week has been pretty freaking fantastic. Um, I had an amazing day today. I spent the day pretty much by myself. You know, after work, I had a session with a career coach. That was my first time ever doing that. That was cool. That was like therapy, but less about mental health and emotions and more about jobs career what I want to do with my life type of thing and just talking through things figuring some stuff out so I feel good about that I appreciate that shout out to Jennifer Jennifer's not listening to this but whatever and what else did I do today I'm supposed to be talking about my week but today was just so good and it's only Tuesday so not much to this week um I went to a couple of stores, ran some errands, vlog of that will probably be up this Sunday, hopefully, maybe, possibly. I didn't record that much, so it should be a short vlog. And 
Let me see what else. Oh, I got ice cream. I'm going to watch Aquamarine for the first time after this. Heard it's a really good summertime movie. Never watched it because apparently I missed some things in my childhood, but it's fine. I'm going to watch it now. And yeah, I feel like I like two weeks ago, I was really, really busy just kind of running around doing a lot of stuff, hanging out with friends, hanging out with people, which was really nice, honestly, because I feel like I haven't been doing much of that in my life. Like most of the time, I just I'm terrible about hanging out with friends, but I feel like I was I was on my game kind of couple of weeks ago so that was nice um but it was very emotionally draining very taxing to me so last weekend I pretty much spent the entire weekend in the house um but it was great I don't feel like I was that productive but that's fine because I took the time to do whatever I felt like doing like most of the time I don't get time to just sit on my phone and watch TikToks for six hours but I did that It was not very healthy, but I wanted to do that, so I did it, and it was fun for me. So, yeah, uh, I did what I wanted. Very nice. I love spending time alone. Like, spending time alone just recharges me. It's, It's such an introvert thing to say. I don't even consider myself an introvert. I think I'm more of, like, an ambivert, because I can be extroverted sometimes. But, anyways, not gonna keep rambling on about that, the low, um, I kind of touched on this, but before Memorial Day, work was getting to me. And I know this was like a couple weeks ago, but even even after Memorial Day, work was getting to me. And I had a beautiful Memorial Day. I spent it with my boyfriend. Very nice day. But um, yeah, work has just been a lot. And that's kind of why I scheduled that career coach meeting thing, which was actually like a benefit through my job. My job really does have like nice benefits and stuff for us. So I really appreciate that. But it was just very stressful and had me questioning a lot of things like my sanity and whether or not I should quit on the spot. But I did not quit on the spot. I did not. I did not go insane. Um, I just think I have these moments sometimes where I get overwhelmed with so much stuff and I am not the best at like expressing it to anyone around me, mostly because I don't like burdening people. Um, more on that in my mental health episode, if you want to learn about my mental health history and things like that, go look at, listen to that, not look at, listen to that, sorry. But yeah, um, that was my low. I guess I should stop saying highs and lows for the week. Maybe do highs and lows for the month because I only post once a month. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Um, But I think that's it for my highs and lows. You let me know how your month has been going. I'd love to hear about your month, even if it sucked. I love listening to people and I love being supportive to people. Um, I really do. Like, I, I'm i kind of bad at doing it uh, intentionally, I guess. Like, I, I won't reach out to you <laughs> because I'm scared. But I love hearing how you guys are doing. So you let me know how your month has been going. And we're going to get into y'all's responses from the Instagram polls and stuff. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Talk about college. Okay, so I want to preface this by saying I'm going to read your responses and then kind of talk about them a little bit, I guess, and say whatever I have to say about them. I haven't read any of them, so these will be a nice surprise. And then I'll probably share some of my college experience so far. I'm currently a sophomore, kind of, even though I've been doing college since ninth grade. Y'all don't do college in ninth grade. Um, But yeah, yeah, we're going to get into them. So 
I'm going to read off the polls first and foremost. The first question I asked was, are you going to college? 103 people said yes, and 34 people said no. And I also said that this is a no judgment zone. And I will stick by that. No judgment because who the heck cares if you go to college or not? Like, honestly, do what you need to do. But we'll get into that later. Next question I asked is, if you're already in college, are you enjoying it? 38 people said no. (laughs) And 20 people said yes. Best believe the 38 people that said no probably said no because... A, COVID, and online college sucks. That's pretty much it. Um, That's probably why it's 38. Also, college is hecka expensive. And professors are crazy. And sometimes people in college really suck. Especially if you're, like, on campus. Um, College kids can suck sometimes. So... I mean, I'm a college kid, but, like, I'd like to think I'm a nice person. Next question is, is your attitude toward college yours or your parents? 66 people said their attitude towards college was theirs, and then 35 said their parents. So, by this question, I mean, do you get your ideas or... You know, do you have, like, standpoints that align mostly with whatever your parents say? So if your parents are like, you need to go to college to get your education, you know, is that the only reason why you are interested in pursuing college or are in college currently? Or do you have kind of your own mind about it? Are you able to, because I know some parents don't even enable you to have your own mind about it. Are you able to like make your own decisions about college and have your own attitude towards it um, that is separate from the people who have raised you or your guardians? So yeah, that was that question. So those were the three polls that I had. Very interesting responses. In conclusion... A lot of people want to go to college. Uh, Most people who are already in college don't like it, uh, including myself. And a lot of people have their own mind when it comes to college. They actually are making their own decisions, or at least they think so for now. So with all of that being said, let's get into the responses. Let's break these down. The first one that I see is from KV, I think. Going out and drinking and taking an Uber home. I just don't trust it. <laughs> uh, felt because there are so many horror stories I've heard where people have been like too drunk to know what's going on. And then their Uber driver tries to kidnap them. And then they got to roll out the car with a friend. And oh my gosh, that just sounds like a lot of work to me. Um, Yeah, I think if I were to, I'm not 21 yet, and I don't have a fake. So in the future, speaking, I think if I were to go out drinking, I probably would not take an uber home i would have to get in the car with somebody that i know and trust very well or take the bus i don't freaking know i'm not taking an uber though because yeah but like why go out and get drunk like i just i don't understand drunk ideology i really don't like why do i want to go out purposefully like make myself feel out of control and then go home and feel bad the next day i don't know like i guess i'm i guess i'm like a a too innocent to like understand somebody tell me what it's like to get drunk and then maybe i can i can figure things out because i just i don't get the hype i don't get it like i literally don't it's not even me trying to be pick me and be like oh my gosh like i'll never go out and get drunk like i'll probably get drunk one day like it's just bound to happen but i not sure that I'm going to like it or pursue it intentionally. Uh, next one is whole three out of four years 
So I'm so scared. I'm going to choose the wrong thing. And that was from Izzy.ag. A-G. Okay, so she's saying she's a junior. Or, sorry, they're saying they're a junior. And they're scared they're going to choose the wrong thing to do. Um, I get this because... College is like high school part two. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, you get a little more freedom. Yes, you can like drink and party more, whatever. But it's literally high school part two. So if you are just graduating high school or about to graduate high school and you're thinking of going to college and you're not sure what to do, you're probably going to see yourself in the same situation when you're a junior in college it's just it's a very confusing time all of it is very confusing teenagehood is confusing your 20s is confusing everything is confusing and it's okay to be confused it's okay to not know what you're doing it's okay to not have it together i know y'all hear that all the time but in case you needed to hear it today and somebody did it is okay to not have this super mapped out exclusive plan like we don't we're not in the 50s no more like we don't have to mm -mm. we don't have to have babies at 22 anymore like (laughs) no we don't have to get married we don't have to do anything that we don't want to do so that's how I feel about it I'm kind of just feeling my way around and I'm trying to choose experiences both professionally and socially and personally that most benefit me i'm being very picky about what it is that i do and what i don't do because i know that if i don't take certain opportunities i'm going to feel like i missed out and i know that i don't know that it's important to just keep an open mind and not necessarily tie myself down to anything like exclusively and even if I do commit to something I can back out if I want to like I don't have to do the same things every day I don't have to see the same people every day do what you want and I know that sounds like stupid and it probably is stupid but that's just my mindset right now that's what's getting me through every day I'm just like what do I want to do today you know, and that helps me not be sad and feel like I'm stuck in a situation that I don't want to be in. Because in reality, a lot of us probably are in situations that we don't want to be in. But changing our mindset a little bit and trying to figure out the best way to benefit ourselves and to keep ourselves happy in the meantime is very important. I kind of ran it on that. Oh, Izzy Ag said another one. I don't know how it is in the U.S., but we have to choose one course to study and that's it for the. Oh, it was a two part. Oh, I see what they mean. Well, that freaking sucks. I'm sorry that you have to go through that. I'm sorry that you have to choose something and you can't choose to just be undecided that really does suck um me saying that probably doesn't help you very much and everything that i just said previously you probably want to throw in the trash i'm sorry that you have to go through that first of all and don't harp too much on what you're choosing now because people get into things work at them get whole doctorates and then decide to do something else so if you get into something if you decide on something and you don't like it and you can't get out of it i'm really sorry but there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you can definitely choose to spend time doing what you love on the side or, I wouldn't say wait until the end to do what you love. I, I wouldn't say that, actually. Do as much as you can that you love on the side. 
if you hate what you choose. Hating what you choose honestly isn't the end of the world. I was watching a YouTube video the other day. I can't remember the girl's name, Amanda something. But she was talking about how people get into jobs that they don't necessarily love, like it's not their passion, but it does provide their needs. And sometimes we have to think of things in that way. Like my job now, I don't think that it's my passion and I'm not going to settle for it. But at the same time, it's providing what I need financially. It's providing what I need experience-wise. I'm building skills and things like that. So I'm not saying go out and do what you hate. But I'm also saying you're not going to love everything you do. And that's okay. Just try your best to put time into things that you love outside of whatever it is that you're doing that you not necessarily hate but don't enjoy that much if that makes sense okay that's tina said tip college is a scam moi uh agreed college in the United States, I will say, because I don't know how college is everywhere else, but college in the United States is absolutely a scam. Um, Tell me why they were charging students the same amount of money to go up to school somewhere. I say up because I'm in Florida, my bad. South Florida, so I am like almost as south as it gets in the United States. But tell me why people people send their send their students to college and they still have to pay the same amount of money as if they're having a normal college experience and you're having college online why do i need to pay the same amount of money to go sit in a cramped dorm room with somebody else that i probably don't even know doing online school tell tell me why I want to know why. The only reason at this point in time that I would physically go to a college campus is if the college offered to pay for my entire housing and everything. I'm not taking out a student loan to go sit in a room and do online class. No. Mm -mm. Could not be me. Couldn't be me. So, yeah. At this point, I'm not even, like, concerned with actually having a college experience anymore to be completely honest with you like I don't foresee myself even joining a club in college uh I'm at a community college right now and they don't really do much so yeah I don't foresee myself participating in much of that I am kind of focusing on other endeavors outside of college to make me happy and make me feel fulfilled so yeah college is a scam at the end of the day in the united states it really is a scam and if you can go to community college i 100 percent recommend that you go to community college if you are not enthused by the college experience because i am a person who is not I chose my own comfortability and safety over going up somewhere, paying full price, and having a quote-unquote college experience from my dorm room. Um, No shade to anybody who did that. But for me personally, it just was not going to work. Me as a person, like my personality, I would not have enjoyed myself uh especially not knowing a lot of people i just would not have felt comfortable doing that um yes 100 percent agree tina you're so pretty by the way okay sorry uh being nosy cc dollar sign said choice when it's my life i don't know what they mean by that oh it's a two-part so sorry (laughs) okay they said i'm this close they put the the emoji like the hand emoji this close to not going because of my family making me feel like i don't have a choice when it's my life amen to this i am lucky enough to have a mother who 
told me, hey, if you don't want to go to college, you don't have to go. There was a hot minute, like a hot month last year when COVID hit, when I was like, maybe I should just take a gap year. Maybe this is a sign. And a lot of people did do that. And I applaud y'all for doing that. But I felt like I I did need to continue college. Um, I, I felt like I, I needed to do that. I don't know why. <sighs> But I did. And if I didn't, then I probably wouldn't have this internship now and I wouldn't be in the place that I am today. So I appreciate my decision. And I'm sorry that your family is making you feel like you have to go to college because you absolutely do not. Like when you think about it, if you're 18 years old, you are of age to make any decisions that you want to make if you're in the United States. I don't know about everywhere else. You can sign your own papers. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. You can go out, win the lottery, and buy a private island if the cars were in your favor. Like, you can literally do anything you want to do. Don't let people who are not you tell you that you have to make a specific decision, especially when it's regarding your life. Um, strong believer in that. Families are great. I love my family. Even the people in my family who are kind of like, you have to go to college. Because I do have people like that, um, who aren't my mother. But you can still love your family and make the right decisions for you out of love for yourself. And you can respect your family's opinions. I'm not saying... Don't go to college because your family told you to go to college. That's dumb. And you might want to rethink that. No offense. I'm just saying. But I'm saying make the right choice for you in the end. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be you. It's going to be just you. Or just you and whatever family that you form in the future. And... Your family's not going to be around. You're going to have to work independently, do your own thing independently, make money independently, which sounds really harsh and scary. I know. But think about it. Like, where you are today, you are definitely not going to be in the same place in 20 years. You're going to be an adult. All of you are not eight years old, I hope. Um, Even eight-year-olds, they're going to be adults. They're going to be 28 years old. And, wow, I can't do math. So sorry. Um, But, you know, like, we're all going to be adult people. And no one is going to be there to tell us what to do. So them telling you that you have to do something now, like, they're not going to be able to do that in the future either. So, like, what, what, what does it matter? Like, why do people do that? Anyways, next one. What do I pack for the dorms? Okay, so I, I almost went to college, uh, like an actual college campus in a dorm, and I can make a whole separate podcast about this, like preparing for college. Like I dang near, I waited until like a few weeks before it was time to move to be like, okay, I'm declining their offer. I'm not going to go to that college. So I had like everything lined up. I was like, I'm bringing this, I'm bringing this, I'm bringing this. I'm going to buy this when I get up there. So then I don't have to like pack it in the car when we drive up. And y'all, it was a whole thing. But I ended up not going. So I do know mostly what you need to bring to a dorm. But of course, I haven't lived in a dorm So I can only give you advice based off of what I knew before I was about to move to a dorm and what I knew the rules to be before I moved to a dorm. So if you want an extra tidbit on like preparing for college, I could definitely give you that. Like I could, I could do that. Um, Oh, CC dollar sign also said, I want to, go to get more education of course and have a better chance at getting a good job um better education 
possibly depending on where you go to school to be honest I feel like I'm not getting necessarily a better education but my college is pushing me in the right direction for me to be able to educate myself at least uh they're kind of giving me the tools that I need to educate myself like without my college I would not have as much as much exposure to graphic design and I wouldn't have the Adobe suite and I wouldn't be able to work through it practice with it all of that so they are giving me the tools at least but yeah you could definitely better at better your education but you don't have to go to college to better your education you could go to a technical school or a technical college um just a tip there and a better chance at getting a job this is not 100% guaranteed in the United States. I think most people know this, but in case you don't know this, just because you go to college doesn't mean you're going to get a great job. There are so many people, especially millennials, who went to college and there was a whole recession when they got out of college and they literally had no jobs, um, at least that they could apply their degrees to. So don't think that going to college guarantees you getting a job, getting into a career. That's definitely something that you have to do yourself. Like right now, I'm preparing myself in the best way possible to be as secure as possible for the rest of my life, essentially. Um, And I feel like a good step into that is by exploring your strongest skills like most young people we just settle for any job just to get some money just to get some money to have a hot girl summer but we don't need to just think about a hot girl summer like build a savings like get a savings account like think about getting a real job outside of I'm not saying all right, here we go. Ah, shoot, here we go again. I'm not saying fast food and retail is not a real job because some people make good money at fast food and retail. However, most people do not. And most of the time, fast food and retail is not helping you build your personal skills that you may want to work on. I don't know why I got so deep into this, but I'm going to move on because we're not talking about jobs. We're talking about college. Uh, But I did just want to say that college doesn't guarantee a job, but you can get some better jobs by having a bachelor's, unfortunately, or not even a bachelor's anymore, more like a master's. Hidden figure, aka my homegirl. Hey, girl. Live your life, go to class, take breaks when necessary, and remember your why. I love this. This is for people who want to go to college, who are in college already, and looking for a way to improve their experience. Live your life is a really good point. Like, don't settle into the student mindset. Like, don't just be like, I'm a student. I'm a college student. I'm a college student. Student, student, student. Like, student is not your identity. You have an identity an identity outside of college, your grades, your professors, your classmates, your clubs that you go to. Like, if you're a college student and you're doing all of those things, you're not just a college student. Like, do things that you want to do. Do things that you don't think you're supposed to be doing right now safely. You know, like some people are like, ah, I'll wait until I have a significant other to go do. Like, do it now. Travel now. The world is opening back up. The world is yours. Like, if you got the money, if you and your homegirl, your homeboy, your home person can save up the money to go on like a road trip, do it. Experience life. You are not just a student. You are not just a kid. You are not just, you know, like don't belittle yourself or don't put yourself in a place where you feel like you can't do what you want to do in life. You don't have to wait until you graduate college to start living. You don't have to wait until you get settled into a job to start living. Like the best memories are made 
on a whim, I feel like. I'm not saying go crazy, but I'm saying, sorry, I was scratching my arm. Live your life, like she said. She also said, go to class. Um, yes, if you are paying to be there, especially if you're paying to be there, go to class. And if you're not paying to be there, go to class and take breaks, like she said. Uh, breaks are very important. If you do need to take a mental health day and skip your classes for the day, tell your professor, take a mental health day. Like, peace out sometimes. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes you need to just take a day to yourself. Even when you feel like you can't, you can. And nobody should penalize you for that. And if they do penalize you for that, you need to tell somebody you need to get that that under control because they should not be doing that and remember your why remember why you're going to college eliza bat said how do you study (laughs) that's funny i don't study um and that's not because i'm super genius smart that's because i'm actually kind of dumb um (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't study, uh, what is a study? I don't, I don't know. My studying consists of looking for quizlets based off of whatever lessons and chapters I've had, reading through some of those, skimming through it before a test that's on that chapter, and hoping for the best honestly um my community college is super easy in my opinion um i've had some pretty rigorous courses before in middle and high school and compared to those it's like a walk in the park like i don't i don't have to i don't have to do much studying and i think god for that because i'm sure people do struggle and i don't want to be insensitive to that i don't want to be like i don't study they have to you know like i don't want to be insensitive to that but i feel like particularly for me with the courses that i'm taking i'm a new media communications major i'm mostly taking like graphic design courses communication slash writing courses these are very like basic simple things to kind of grasp at least for me and that's why I am in the major that I'm in because I can understand it it's it's not something that I necessarily have to study so yeah uh but don't be like me if you are in a very difficult major and you need to study um hit up the YouTubes hit up some study routine videos that's why I don't have study routine videos, because I don't study. Um, but I still make them grades. I still make the D's list. This may change when I transfer out of my community college. I might have to actually start studying. So we'll see. KB Trippin said, I want to go out of state, but my mom said no. I just want to get away. Ooh. Ooh, this... This is a tough one. I don't want to say go out of state. Because there might be a good reason why your mom is saying don't go out of state. But then again, okay, okay, we're going to explore both sides. We're going to explore both sides of this. Your mom saying no could mean two things. One, it could mean that... She wants you to stay near her so she can have more access to you. So you can be more accessible to her for whatever reason. Or she'll miss you if she's that kind of mom. Another way to go about this is um, she could have said no because she understands who you are as a person especially right now. I have a lot of talks with my mom about my siblings. 
not necessarily me, but my siblings. And some of the decisions that she makes, she says it's for the best interest of them. And a lot of the times I believe her because I see what she means. Um, certain decisions moms make for their kids because they know what ki- kind of kid that they have. Like if they know that their kid is very impressionable, not saying that you're impressionable, but just for an example, they're very impressionable. They're like a follower. They, you know, hang with the wrong crowds. Maybe they'd be like, don't go out of state because you're going to get in trouble or you're going to be dead. Like, frankly, you know, you're going to get in the wrong situation. You're not going to be able to get out of it. Um, So they make that kind of decision for their child. So, I don't know. Think of it from a perspective that's not necessarily yours. And think of the type of person that your mom is and the type of decisions that me that she makes and why she makes those decisions. Like, do, do some deep thinking on this. And if you think your mom is the type of person who would try to, like, not just you being, oh, you know she's trying to keep me home but like seriously think about it if you seriously think she's the type of person who would try to keep you home just because she wants you to be more accessible to her for her benefit then this might need to be a decision that you have to make and say okay going to college out of state would be best for me So I need to do this for myself. But if your mom is more the type of person who is actually selfless when it comes to making decisions and you think that she's of sound mind and she actually wants what's best for you, then just listen to your mom. And think about the type of person that you are as well. Like, Think about it hard. Because when I was thinking, I want to go out of state, I was thinking, I want to get away too. Same. Like, I hate Florida. Like, let me get out of here. But when I sat and I thought about it and I thought of all the reasons, like, my mom wasn't against me going out of state, but I thought of all the reasons why I might not be comfortable with going out of state. I was like, "Mm, maybe I'll just apply to mostly colleges in state. And a few out of state, but I don't think I am ready for an out of state experience. So all of those things have to go into it, essentially. Think about the type of person that you are. Think about the type of person that your mom is. How you make decisions, why you make decisions. How she makes decisions, why she makes decisions. And then go about it in the best way possible. But I definitely... Uh, don't recommend if you are going to leave I don't recommend leaving on bad terms Um, it might not be something that you can help but definitely don't be like I hate you and then storm out like (laughs) don't do that Um, because you're gonna regret it later you're gonna be like I wish I you know I patched it up with my mom because I miss my mom like as much as our parents annoy us sometimes like Everybody gets to a point in their life where they just want their parents in their life. It's it's an unfortunate truth. Like, you might have kids or you might get a dog or something and just be like, my mom would have liked my dog, you know? I don't know. But for real, like, don't leave on bad terms because it's not, it's not an easy thing to patch up and y'all are both going to have to probably go through therapy to figure it out. Um... But if it's not up to you and your mom makes it a bad terms type of situation, just be as mature as possible about it and say, you know, I'm making the best decision for me. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Peace. Big Nicks 81, a.k.a. my god mom. Hi, god mom. The years are going to pass by. Never regret any decisions made. I agree. Um, Not just when this applies to college, but when this applies to life. Years go by so freaking fast. You don't even remember most of them. You have to sit down and intentionally think about everything in order to remember it. 
So don't regret things. You may make bad decisions. You may decide to go to college and then hate it and be like, I hate this and drop out. Don't regret anything though. Like bad experiences are meant for learning. That's how I feel about it. And I'm going to leave it at that. All the good user use names were taken is probably what their username was. I'm scared I'm working this hard for it to all amount to nothing. And I will either not get the scholarships I need or end up hating my job slash future schools. Uh, This sounds like someone who's in high school. And I definitely get what you mean. Um, so forth as scholarships, I'm going to tell y'all a little something about me. I basically didn't get into the top school in the state. Well, one of the top schools in my state. If y'all are in Florida or know anything about Florida, you know that's FSU. Didn't get into FSU. Didn't get a lot of scholarships that I applied for, and I applied for a lot of scholarships, uh, the small ones, the big ones, the medium sized ones. Um, I think I applied for the Gates scholarship, that thingy. Um, I didn't even try to apply to an Ivy League because I was just like, why? <laughs> um, and that doesn't mean that all of the work that I put in in high school meant nothing. All of the work that I put in high school gave me a drive and a work ethic that I wouldn't have had otherwise. If I would have just farted around, did nothing, got bad grades, whatever, I wouldn't have a drive to do things independently, which is really important. So don't feel like just because you don't get all of the highest accolades and don't get into the schools that you want or get the scholarships that you want that it meant nothing um college is expensive though so I understand what you mean on that front but I was luckily able to get financial aid and my school is cheap so things turned out for me with or without the scholarships uh, and I actually did get one scholarship, but it was like a luck of the draw thing. It was, I didn't even know I got the scholarship <laughs> um, until I was literally a few days away from starting college. Uh, starting, well, like restarting college, I should say. And you think that you'll end up hating your job in future schools. I kind of already talked about this before. Um, you might end up hating your job. And you know what? If you're financially stable, quit your job. Quit your job. Don't sit there and hate your job for forever and ever and ever. Like, for real. If you go to school and you get a job that you hate and you're financially stable, quit. Like, duh. Like, (laughs) I don't think I don't think I even had to explain that. But if you're not financially stable, try to seek help in the best way possible, whether that's Gus. uh, What am I saying? Gustomer? What the heck? Government assistance or starting side hustles or doing whatever you can to get out of there because your mental health and stability is so much more important than keeping a job that you hate even if you went to school to get the job um there's no shame in that please do not waste your life and hating future schools transfer It's okay to transfer. It's okay to get to somewhere and be like, I don't like it here. And transfer. If you need to transfer back home after you move somewhere, do that. Because it's what's best for you. If you need to transfer to another college in another state, in another country, do what you think is best. That's the moral of this entire episode. Like, literally do what you think is best for you. Don't be afraid of the fact that you're going to have to make those decisions because some of those things are inevitable. It's literally not something that is in your control. Um, You can't plan ahead for things like that. You can't plan ahead for your emotions or for whatever's going on with the world. Like COVID has shown us, you can't plan ahead for everything. You can't say, 
oh, I'm going to be so happy at this job because I chose this career path. Like, no, it might be a career path that's perfect for you and you literally just hate the job and you need to get a new job. You never know. You literally can't plan for those things. So please don't be afraid of making those decisions because they're going to happen and you're going to need to. And it's pretty much inevitable. It's just a part of life, I guess. Rolden Erica, aka Erica. Hi, Erica, said college is what you make of it. Can learn a lot, but if you can get a tech degree, save money and time. I 100% agree on this. So many people like... In my senior year of college, I went to um, a technical high school slash college program thingy. I hated the program because it was accounting. So, yeah. But so many people actually had passions for what they were doing there. Like, they had, um, like, avionics. Is that the name of it? I don't know. They had, like, graphic design courses. They had... Uh, nursing courses and people were passionate about what they were doing and they were going to school saving a lot of money a lot of money and doing what they loved without having to spend like a million dollars stay on a campus all of that stuff so definitely I agree tech degrees um a lot of people do these if they're into makeup or uh nails like you can become a nail technician you can become a specialized cosmetologist you can learn to be a masseuse you can literally go to a technical school for anything so if you think that there's no place for you to better your education if you're looking to do something more technical and less like ideals wise i don't know if i said that right Um, there's definitely a place for you. Look around your city and state and region to see if you can find a technical school because you might save yourself a lot of time, money, and stress rather than going to college for something that you really don't want to be doing. Especially if you like to do hair, child, go to school and learn how to do hair so you can do hair and be happy. If you love doing hair, go be happy and do hair. Like, there is no shame in that. Ice cream is not free aka Oralis, said, use Rate My Professor. (sighs) Rate My Professor is my go-to. Anytime it's time for me to register for classes, I go straight to Rate My Professor because professors be crazy. If you don't know what Rate My Professor is, it is a website. You can literally type it into Google and it will come up and you can put the name of the professor that is listed on your class in their search bar and the ratings will come up even if they're like little known professors somebody will have gone on there to say something about them so i can usually catch the vibe of a professor from rate my professor that is actually very important if you have the ability to choose your professors please use that because you know yourself and you know who you would work best with and what kind of professor you need um So yeah, Arlene said, I'm scared that I won't make friends as easily when universities are much larger than high school. I understand this 100% because I'm the type of person who needs a certain size school to feel like happy, I guess. Not necessarily happy. My happiness does not lie in the size of my school. But socially... I need a certain size school to like thrive. Um, and if Arlene is in the type of school that's smaller and she feels like she's thriving in that environment, then maybe consider looking into a smaller school. And I'll tell you why. I've made the mistake of going to a small school and it was not for me. I hate small schools. I love going to a big school. I love seeing a lot of people that I can't remember their face. I mean, I can't remember their faces. I love seeing new people all the time. I love meeting new people all the time. I love 
having new experiences with people I don't know, like, those are usually the best experiences. Like, I don't like knowing everybody, because if I know everybody and they know me, then they're going to place unrealistic expectations on me and my personality to be the same all the time and i hate that because i change a lot people change and we should not expect the same things out of one another so definitely consider the size of the university that you're going to and if you think that it won't be somewhere that benefits you consider going somewhere smaller But on the other end, don't be afraid that you won't make friends because you can make friends anywhere. I know your personality, Arlene. You can literally make friends anywhere. Um, And I know a lot of people think that they have like yucky, disgusting, despisable personalities, but nobody, nobody who is mentally emotionally stable um well i can't say that long pause because i'm trying to figure out what i'm trying to say okay most people don't have terrible personalities if you think you have a bad personality if you think you're a bad person you're probably not a bad person you're probably very easy to get along with Um, most people have the ability to get along with at least one person in whatever environment they place themselves in. But the thing is, you can't be afraid. You have to have a little bit of confidence. I know it's really hard. My introvert side screams. Um, but you're going to regret not making the effort or being more confident in yourself to make friends because I know a lot of the friends that I've made were just made on a whim and I really didn't want to talk to them but I did and it came out good Arlene also said I'm always indecisive about pursuing a stem field when it's high demand but I'm also very creative Ooh, I feel like there's so much pressure especially for women right now to pursue a stem field And I'm not saying that women don't need to pursue STEM. Definitely don't get me wrong. Women need to pursue STEM if it is what they are passionate about and they want to help people in that way. And that's the way that they want to help the world evolve. If that's the way that you want to help the world evolve and you feel it in your heart of hearts, pursue STEM. But I feel like so many girls, teens, women nowadays pursue stem just because people tell them to pursue it or just because they're good at math or just because they're good at science just because you're good at a subject doesn't mean that you have to pursue it career-wise you know i'm good at writing but i'm not going to be a journalist and i'm not going to be a writer that's not what i want to do I want to pursue things that are outside of my already uh, God-given gifts and talents or however people say it. So Arlene, I'm not saying don't pursue STEM, but I am saying don't let the world tell you you need to pursue STEM in order to be important, in order to be smart, in order to be intelligent, in order to make money, in order to be successful, in order to be a different type of woman. Pursuing STEM doesn't make you stand out in any particular way. It's it's up to you. It's truly what you think you'll want to do for the rest of your life. Not saying that STEM people can't go to school, be a doctor, get a creative thing going on and go run off and do that. But I am saying if you think it's going to make you miserable for an extended period of time that you don't think that you could deal with, drop STEM. And don't be afraid to switch your major. So many people go to college and they're like, I'm going to be a bio major. And then they literally do a 360 and they become an English major. Like, 
please don't be afraid to do that if you need to do that in college. Don't waste a lot of years, a lot of time, a lot of money on something that you know you're not going to pursue in the end. Switch your major. Okay. Oh, wow. I think I'm, I think I'm missing a few. I think I scrolled past them by accident. Oh, now I have to go find them again. Darn. Darn, 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 darn. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find them. I'm going to find them. I'm so sorry. Brianna, my friend, said failure. Uh, I guess she's afraid of failure in college. Don't be afraid to fail in college. Like, honestly, college is is just another stepping stone. Yes, it's an expensive stepping stone. But, um... If you fail out of college, honestly, it just might not be the path for you. Not everybody is meant to go to college not everybody is meant to study things for an extended period of time um a lot of people are more successful without college so if you fail out of college you're not a failure like if you drop out of college if you fail out of college whatever the heck happens you're not a failure it's just another stepping stone and this is not your place to be at at this time at least and if you fail out and you want to pursue it again later on or something and you feel like you're in a healthy stable place to do that then do it but don't be afraid to fail because being afraid of failure i feel like it just brings failure into your life you're like oh i'm so afraid of failure and then it just happens and then you're like shoot i failed this is what i was afraid of uh, it's manifestation, law of attraction, all of those things. That Hannah says, nervous because I know it's going to be stressful, but I'll be so happy to not do maths anymore. <laughs> That's how I felt. Um, I understand that. Ooh, ooh, I understand that. I, what did I do in my junior year? I took all of the math that I needed to take for at least my uh, associates so I didn't have to deal with math anymore while it was still fresh in my mind because I absolutely despise math. Oh my gosh, I hate math. I hope to never have to take another math class again. That is literally the worst place that I can be in. I'm so sorry if you love math um i ooh, math gets on my nerves i hate math so much that's just not the way my brain is built my brain is not built for it i mm -mm. so hannah i understand and yes those math classes are probably going to be stressful if you're like me if you're a lot like me they're probably going to stress the heck out of you but once they're over you're going to breathe a sigh of relief and be like i'm never going to have to take math again so yeah uh also if you're taking math currently or next semester i'm sorry rip i'm going to uni and i'm super scared of sharing a room with someone uh sabina Fries. i hope i said that right yeah yeah i was the same way when i was going to move to a dorm i was literally going to move into a room that was like a suite so it would be like one side is my side and then the other side is one other person's and then we share a bathroom because i absolutely did not want to share a room with someone uh literally thought that was the scariest thing ever i can't give much advice on that because i still have not lived with someone that i don't entirely know um so yeah but don't be too scared of it. Like, you might like the person. You might end up being best friends with them. Or you might end up being, like, mutuals with them. Just, you know, you don't have to be best friends with your roommate. Um, sometimes it's better that you're not best friends with your roommate. Just because they live with you. <laughs> and if y'all have a fight, 
then it's going to be hecka uncomfortable. But, you know, don't go into it thinking I'm going to get the most disgusting, wretched roommate I could possibly get. Um, Definitely go in with an open mind about it because manifestation. I'm going to say that again. And finally, Al Stu 2002, a.k.a. Anaya, says, Why does a degree have to signify someone's intellectual qualities? This is exactly what I was saying earlier. Like, that piece of paper does not mean you're smart. That piece of paper means that you can go sit in a classroom, listen to a professor talk, maybe take some notes, cheat, and make good grades that are probably only good grades because you satisfied the professor in some way. Um, all of those qualities don't make you smart. They just make you a good hustler. If you're a good hustler, you're a good hustler, you know? Um, not to say some classes aren't really, really hard and thought-provoking and take a lot of all of that time and such but they don't make you smart um yeah that's that's all that i have to say if you are one of those people who are like i am an intellectual i am gifted because i have made straight a's all my life all of my teachers love me that just means that you're probably a really good people pleaser and i'm not saying anything is wrong with that i'm a pretty decent people pleaser until I don't care but yeah there's nothing wrong with being a good people pleaser as long as you are healthy mentally and you know you you live in your best life as a people pleaser some people are just people pleasers nothing wrong with it if you're healthy if you're not healthy you might want to stop and yeah a degree doesn't signify intellectual capability at all Like, if you don't get a degree, that doesn't make you dumb. If you get a degree, that doesn't make you smart. It just means you went to college, you did what had to be done, and you left. Now you have a piece of paper that says you did that. It's kind of like a... I feel like college, in a way, is like a participation um, trophy, It's like, okay, you went through all of the years. You did everything that we told you to do. You followed the rules. You did all that was asked of you. Good job. You get a cookie. Here's your degree. You know, that's 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 essentially what college is in my head. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but to. I guess get into a little bit more of my experience before I sign off. I am currently, again, a new media communication student. I was supposed to graduate with my associates at the end of high school, but I failed to do so because I got a C in one of my classes as a dual enrollment student. If you don't know what dual enrollment is, it's when high schoolers take college classes pretty much um and I was in dual enrollment since ninth grade um which was challenging because I pretty much never had a summer off in high school um it was really great time I really don't recommend that like (laughs) I I feel like some of that time was wasted because I worked so hard and I literally didn't even get my AA at the end of high school, like I was supposed to, um, because it was just all too much pressure. And I didn't give myself any time off. I didn't give myself any breaks with school. I just kind of kept going, 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 because I was like, oh, I'm going to graduate at the end with my AA. I'm going to be so smart. I'm going to save so much money. Literally just looked down and the podcast stopped recording but as i was saying i thought i was going to save so much money and be so much smarter and like whatever but i didn't do that um i honestly don't even remember like what i said or what else i was talking about Hmm. but yeah my 
in conclusion, my college experience has been fine. I haven't been super, super stressed out. Um, I did have one terrible experience with a professor who was racist and an actual strain on my mental health. Sorry if I already said that. Um, yeah, he was not great. But I don't intend to put too much thought into college, to be honest. I'm just kind of here just to get the degree and go. Um, <laughs> which is probably bad because that's kind of how I thought high school would be. Like, I would just go along, get my diploma and go. But I ended up having a great time in high school. So I don't know. Maybe things will change in college. Maybe I will actually have a college experience. Um, but as of right now, I'm not I'm not planning on it. I'm just kind of like whatever happens happens you know so don't let college stress you out don't let college get you down don't let people tell you you have to go to college don't let people tell you not to go to college don't let anything that i say sway you so much so that you're not even listening to your own thoughts anymore literally just take all of this stuff with a grain of salt Keep it surface level. Don't internalize everything that everybody says to you about college. Um, take the time to be with yourself. If you're religious, pray. If you're spiritual, do what spiritual people do. Align your sock, shock, shock, Jesus, I can't speak. Sh- so- chakras, is that how you say it? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. Don't come for me. Do what you have to do to make sure that you are making the best decision that you could possibly make for yourself. Even if you're already in college, if you want to drop out, do what's best for you. If you want to stay in college, do what's best for you. If you want to go to college, do what's best for you. If you don't want to go to college, do what's best for you. College is literally another stupid construct that people have come up with to make money and to make you crazy that's all that i have to say on that college has its benefits but a lot of it is bs so with that being said maybe i should just title this episode college is bs (laughs) and save you a lot of time thank you so much for listening to this episode thank you for listening to me ramble if you liked this episode please leave a little review on Apple Podcasts, whatever podcast platform that you're listening to. If you can leave a review, leave a review because that will help other people be able to see this podcast. Um, You know how like Instagram and YouTube has algorithms? Well, apparently podcasting has algorithms where the more good reviews, the better. And it pushes it out to more people. So then more people can hear me ramble as well. Um, Again, thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you for being here. If you had me on in the background while you were working on something, if you had me on in the background while you were working on like college applications or something, props to you. If you graduated in the spring, congratulations. If you're graduating soon, congratulations in advance. I am very proud of you wherever you're at in life. If you're not graduating and you got a good job, congratulations. If you don't have a job and you're unemployed but you're happy as heck, congratulations. If not, I pray that you continue to work towards your happiness. Follow your happiness not an illusion of happiness that someone has told you you have to have, but your true happiness. And if you don't know what that is yet, explore it. That's all that I have to say on that. Um, Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye!